Here at British Pathé, while we were filming the wars and the football and the xylophones, we always kept one eye on the cutting edge of science. Just think of the leaps and bounds that science made throughout the 20th century and you'll understand what I mean. When the newest discoveries were made, British Pathé was there. Now here's something pretty interesting from 1926. If you're wondering what that is, it's a multi-lens German telescope to seek out the stars. And speaking of stars, Boris Karloff was there to introduce it. I'm kidding, actually, that was Dr. Rudolf Wegener. Oh yes, the famous Dr. Wegener. And moving along to agriculture. Eggs, millions of eggs. The humble producer, the fowl, is nowadays subject to mass production. And from the day the chicks are hatched, millions never know what freedom is. The natural life out of doors isn't their birthright in the 20th century. Free-range chickens wasn't really a thing back then. Chicks by the million. The first thing to find out about them, their sex, cock or hen. It takes an expert to spot the difference when they're only a day old. Just a little piece of trivia here. When I was a little boy, I had the book, The Book of Lists, which was a book of lists. And one of the lists was the world's strangest jobs. And chicken sexer was the number one job on that list. True story. They're feeding it with the facts of life, poultry life, the vital statistics of eggs and chicks. So many facts indeed, that no human brain could cope with them in the time. The computer uses codes, magnetic recording tapes, and heaven knows what. And when the facts have been fed into it, it knows absolutely all there is to know about an egg, except how to lay it. You see, even then, computers were making our lives a little bit easier, and a little bit creepier. And here's something else that computers do today to a large degree, but that they were already doing way back then. Where Peter Sanoviev has a hobby which is strictly for boffins. He keeps it in his garden shed, and it's called Digital PDP 8 Oblique S. Yes, it's a computer, and it has a hobby too, composing music. That was cool. I think you had to be really patient, though, because, you know, now you just go and it all happens for you. Anyhow, there was also science that seemed like the best thing ever. A hundred years endeavor towards the goal of painless childbirth for all comes within sight of achievement. A bill goes before Parliament to make analgesia the right for every mother, rich or poor. Well, that sounds great, doesn't it? Finally, painless childbirth and available by law to every woman. It might have seemed that way, but trialine turned out to be not so great after all. It's been classed as a carcinogen, and there were numerous problems in the 1950s with heart arrhythmia because of the use of trialine, which is a shame. However, medical and scientific advances are often trial and error, and a case of experimentation. A sight just as fascinating to these teenagers are offbeat experiments on scientific subjects. Sounds dull, perhaps, but the holiday time lectures given at the Royal Institution are always packed. Started by Faraday, the famous scientist in 1826, as a special treat for schoolchildren, the emphasis being on entertainment, they proved so popular, they've continued ever since. And it's really cool that they continued the lectures, even though they began a long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Yes, kid, that was indeed a lightsaber, and it confirms one thing. It confirms one thing about science down the ages. There has always been something to make your hair stand on end. Okay, if he means things that scare the crap out of you, then I think he's right, because this is about as scary as science can get. The first atomic bomb went down on this Japanese army base, Hiroshima. A hundred thousand Japanese were killed, four square miles of the city were blasted into dust, and a black rain of destruction hovered over the ruins for many hours. Okay, that's not even the scariest thing. The scariest thing is at the end of the film, where we left you with this. For the future, the choice is peace or total destruction. The atomic age is here. Heavy words indeed. And that was truly the dark side. But on the bright side, think of all the good that science can do. A vaccine against polio, only it's taken just like medicine. The Florida Attorney General started the ball rolling in the mass distribution. It's cherry flavored, so there's no difficulty with kiddies. Everybody under 40 in Dade County is going to take it. That's half a million in the biggest mass test of a polio vaccine ever held. The new vaccine is one of three types, all claim to be an improvement on the famous Salk vaccine. Between them, they may make polio as rare as smallpox. And that was rare. In the United States, there were 57,000 cases of polio in 1952, and 20 years later, there were only eight. Now let's end on a lighter note, okay? 
I'd like to introduce you all to Geigen. Now let's meet probably the strangest man we've ever introduced. The name is Geigen, and although not quite human, he's certainly the nearest approach yet created by man. We used the word strange, yet there may well be a time when robots like Geigen are accepted as part of our everyday life. I know what you're thinking. Which one are they talking about? Geigen is obviously one male who can be relied upon not to step on his partner's feet. Nor would you be likely to have any trouble on the dance floor with him around. Nine feet tall and weighing about half a ton, it would take more than half a dozen ordinary men to hold him back if he lost his temper. Or, literally, blew a gasket. Oh well, those will be the days. One day, ladies and gentlemen, a guy again in every home. Well, that's it for today, but I'll see you all next Sunday with another one of these things. Uh, links to all the videos I used, you can find right here below. And definitely check out last week's highlight film, Britain at Work, and click here for UFOs and IFOs.